today i have come here to speak on something uh, which uh, uh, nobody would have expected uh, me to speak <coughs> interestingly we have all heard of water we have all heard of different kinds of water we have heard of mineral water we have heard of drinking water we have heard of spring water we have heard of a lot different types of water but have anybody heard about dangerous water now now i am going to talk about something called dangerous water you see first of all to go into what water is situation today is 70% of our planet surface is water 97% of that is in the oceans salt water cannot be drank 25% of it is frozen in the north and south pole it's only 1% of water that is available for us for actual use which includes drinking transportation agriculture cooling heating name it but what is the water issue today the water issue today is uh, the industry is consuming a lot of water and this consumed water is let out into the open some treated some without treated and today we have a norm as to we have to treat the industrial water to certain standards and these standards are already specified but all of these standards are very old it's age old and these standards basically specify that water dirty water waste water can be diluted and bring down the pollutant in concentration and let go into the lakes and rivers no problem but the current situation is that bad that our rivers and lakes are getting worse dirty bad the fact that remains is this is all okay certain amount of treatment goes certain amount of aspect goes into these waters but the most dangerous water on this planet or most dangerous man made effluent on this planet is your sewage the most dangerous water uh, man made effluent is sewage sewage water is uh, so dangerous that it is the cause for most of the problems on the planet today which we clearly ignore today let us go to the history of sewage 100 years ago what sewage we had it is not the same sewage today now what is sewage in the first place sewage we think is a water that we throw out every day from our homes our offices it contains human excreta it contains urine it contains some detergent it contains some oils some soaps etc well this was true 100 years ago today the sewage is different our technology that is there to treat sewage is 100 years ago is 100 years old and we still continue to use it only the modification is in the engineering side the science is the same now what is today's sewage today's sewage has changed over the period of last 100 years as i told you today's sewage contains a lot lot more things than what it had 100 years ago today 20% of our population are sick at one time or the other so a lot of pharmaceutical products pharmaceutical chemicals are solid taken into the body 5 10% 20% percent is the bioavailability and the balance comes out into the sewage 20 100 years ago there were there was no oral contraceptives today a large population reproductive age population take oral contraceptives and what are these these are hormones and these come out in the sewage antibiotics chemotherapeutic agents all these go into the sewage and sometimes micro polluters or small polluters small organizations that pollute put their polluted water into the sewage so it is not the same sewage you had 100 years ago it's a different sewage today but the technology what we use is still the same 
Now, what does this this cost to the to the humans or to the life on the planet? Sewage is treated to a certain standards which is specified by the uh, uh, by the uh, environmental agencies. What is this, what do they specify? They specify that you control chemical oxygen demand or COD. You control bio, biochemical oxygen demand or BOD. pH, conductivity, and sometimes you know dissolve solids, and then let it let it go. You make a standard for this. But what we don't understand is we are not uh, making standards which uh, address the other aspects of the sewage. This is what happens uh, in the in the current current day sewage treatment. What happens because of that? The discharged sewage, supposed to have met the requirements of discharge, but it still contains substances that are extremely dangerous. Substances that can cause diseases. And how does it come back to us? Food chain. Most of the treated sewage goes for agriculture. This gets into the fruits, vegetables, which is grown in this, uh, with this water because there is not much difference between the plant hormones and human hormones. There it can, comes back into the food chain, into our system. Result, 60% of the world population is bald today. And by 20, 30, 20, 50, I think there will be no hairs on human body. A large population, uh, percentage of population are infertile. Let me not talk about other diseases that are, that are coming into the picture. So, gentlemen, the, the worst, some of the things which I say important is that the present standards have to change, number one. Number two, you have uh, the agencies to fix people who can steady the sewage, I mean today's sewage, in detail. Analyze all the chemical substances in it. Number two, declare the sewage as the most poisonous substance so that there will be stringent norms of how to dispose it of safely. Invest more money into research and development, get better systems to work, get people to innovate better technologies, and then we said we should start this by ourselves, by myself. So that's eight years ago we invented a new technology, okay, called fine particle thrombotic agglomeration reaction, doesn't matter about the name there, but it's a technique by which you can separate out all the chemical elements of the periodic table that is ever mixed in water out and get clear water, clean water out the way the water was earlier. In a sense, kind of a time machine for water. This happens without, without addition of chemicals, without adding any kind of bacteria into it or microorganisms into it. It happens by mere physical process. You know, every element in the periodic table has a resonating frequency. And every element which forms into compound when it is in compound, it has a specific frequency of disassociation. Now, if you take water in, put this frequency in, the elements disassociate from their compound, separate out, and the water gets separated out in one side, and you have the elements separate on the other side. If appropriately handled by making the weak forces to act on these uh, 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 elemental particles, then you can get the whole dirt which was there in the water out comfortably. Now, this technology, we worked eight years for it and finally a couple of years ago was patented and now 
we have to look at how this can work for the benefit of the mankind. So, my dream is that one day, every household, every apartment, every factories, every building, everywhere where water is being used, we, I would like technologies like this, I don't mean this, technologies like this, more and more innovations have to come, and technologies like this should recover water completely. Mind you, I said in the beginning, there is only one percent. There is only one percent of water. And if we contaminate this, uh, the one person comes to 0.5, then 0.25, and then end of the day, you will, you will end up with absolutely no water available. And this situation is not far off. Believe me, it is within our lifetime. We already have depleted surface water, I mean, contaminated surface water. Your groundwater is depleting. Aquifers are drying, you know, and uh, sea levels are raising. Thus, salt water levels are coming up. So, consumable water or water that we can use for our purposes, drinking, cooking, etc., etc., is becoming less and less and less. It is just this that time important that the younger generations, the middle generations, and the older generations together should come to a consensus to see that we need to recover water. Another issue is there. Water is very cheap in most countries. So it makes a lot of economic sense to take dirty water, mix it with clean water, dilute it to the level the, the standards ask for and drain it. This needs responsibility of each one of us, each one of us to implement our sense in saying that my water footprint is going to be zero or my water foot to footprint is going to be 10 liters. Today, each person is given 120 to 140 liters of water per day, each individual for every household. Just imagine if I make it 10 liters. Just imagine the amount of water I save. Just imagine how much of this water will be in the environment. And water is always recycled. The total quantity of water in the planet is the same for millions of years. There are places where people travel a, a one to two kilometers to fetch water. But today we, are, we think that we are safe but we are not. One of the dangerous situations which, we are, which is going to come in the next uh, 30, 40 years, no, not even 30, 40 years, next 10 to 20 years, is going to be water. Not energy, not oil, not anything else. Water. So recovering water is one aspect of it. At the same time, clean water is a second part of it. Believe me, all diseases, today, which is there on the planet, may it be animals, humans, plants, is because of the water we drink, air we breathe, and the food we eat. If this can be made better, cleaner, it can be dearer. Thank you.